so your vmware vsphere data stores so our vmware ss host supporting storage types one is the local data store local data store means your ss server has a local hard disk is called as local data store and your ESS server supporting the remote storage also and the remote storage one type of the remote storage is called as NFS NFS store remote storage and the second one is called as internet iSCSI or you can simply call as internet SCSI or iSCSI SCSI means small computer system interface now in this lab we will go for how to configure NFS remote storage by using your Windows Server 2008 R2? So, NFS stands for Network File System. Network File System. So, I am configuring as my Windows Server 2008 R2 system as a my NFS server and my ESS host as a NFS clients. So now you go for how to configure your Windows Server 2008 R2 system as a NFS server. See right now in my Windows Server 2008, if you go for the computer icon, so I have the only one hard disk is there. This is my C drive. For the remote storage purpose, I have connected one more hard disk. For checking the how many hard disks are there, just go for the run command and type a command disk mgmt disk mgmt dot msc for opening the disk management see right now in my windows server 2008 r2 system i have a disk 0 is a part is EB, and i have the one more disk i connected recently now the disk 1 is 80 gb is offline see right click here and just go for online is not initialized again right click so go for initialize the disk so create a partition now so right click on the unlimited area so new simple volume next so we want to make it like a two different remote storages example I'll make it as a some 40 GB as a one remote storage so this I'm making as E drive and the file system type is a by default is NTFS only. In the same process, I have the remaining 40 GB free space, and this 40 GB free space it will create a one more partition now. So right now I have created as a my FTZB hard disk as a two partitions. One is the E drive and second one is the F drive, and each one is a part is B. So now if open the computer icon, I have the E drive and F drive. So now on my E drive, I'm creating a folder, right click, and a new folder. Example, I'm creating as a, uh, generally the SAN devices, you can call it as SAN. I'm providing as a SAN1. So again, in the computer, in a drive, I'm creating a new folder. 
and 2. To make it as NFS here now, see right click on the SAND2 folder or any folder name. If you go to the properties, see we got like a sharing is there and this is a sharing we can use for Windows system sharing only. But you want to go for like a NFS sharing, we have to add the NFS roles also. So now, to configure as a your Windows Server 2008 as NFS Server, so go for the Server Manager. See in the roles, uh, if the file server role is installed, no problem. But right now the file server role is not installed, so just go for Add Roles. And next, see in the file server role only, we got like a either NFS server role also is available and go for next and next so now we got the role name is called as a services for the network file system services for the NFS and go for next and click on install so now it is installing the NFS service for over 2008 so your 2008 R2 system is at right now is acting as a NFS server. Generally, your Linux system we can configure as NFS server, but even though your Linux system, like your Windows system, also we can configure as as NFS server. So now open a computer icon. So there is a E drive and F drive is there. In E drive, I get the sand one folder. So right click on the sand one folder and click on the properties. See now we got option name is called as NFS sharing. So click on the NFS sharing tab. See right now it's not shared. So mine is NFS sharing. Share this folder. The share name is by default generally folder name only. The sand one. Now go for the permissions. So by default, you can see this one for all missions. The default permissions read only is there. Now change it as a read and write option and allow to root access. So it is okay. Apply. Okay. So this is your the shared folder name SAN1 under this center server. In the same process, go for the one more folder name, SAN2. Right click on the SAN2 and just go for the properties. Click on the NFS sharing, manage the sharings. So save this folder and click on permissions and change the permission type as a permissions as a type of access, read and write and allow the root access. So it is OK. Apply and OK. Now your NFS server is ready. So the next step we have created as a your 2008 server as a NFS server and these NFS shares we have to mount it to we have to mount to each ESS host. So now go for recent server. So we have the ESS1 and ESS2, there are two hosts are available. To add the remote storages, <coughs> so now I'm adding the remote storage devices to the ESS1. So select the ESS1 and go for the configuration tab. So click on the configuration tab. So now in the configuration tab, so just go for the storage. So we have only the data store one and this is connected to your ESS one. It is only local data store. Local. And if you want to add like the remote data storages, so add storage, click on add storage. So there is a got option name disk by LAN. So this is for adding the local data store 
or you want to add the ice fuzzy or the fiber channel storage devices. Now I'm adding the network file system storage devices NFS. Say next. So this is the server name or you can say IP address. So this is server means you can say your NFS server IP address. So NFS server IP address are given as a 192.168.5.1 and the folder name is nothing but a share name. See the share name I have given as a SAN1. See the share name is a case sensitive and the data store name example I will provide as a SAN1. So go for next and print. See now we got like is mounted like a SAN1. And you can see the size and everything. So 36 by 40 GB. And the same process way we can able to add one more storage. So add storage NFS. So your NFS server IP address. See for the lab purpose, I made the one server as a NFS server for two remote storages. But in the real time production point of view, they are not using the NFS server. Most of the things, most of the companies, they are using the for SAN devices only, or the NAS device. So the NFS is just like a, a NAS device only. So we can type the name slash SAN2. So the data store name. You can provide it as a SAN2 and go for next and finish. So now we got the remote storages as available. You can see one is the local data store and the SAN1 and the SAN2. This is a better idea. I'll make it as a rename this one. If I click on the data store one in there and I'll rename it. This is one data store. See now in the same process, what you can do is select the ESS host 2 and go for the configuration to so the storage is there and the storage. We have the only Docker data store only. So better idea I'll rename as a ESS2 data store and the similar process uh, how we added the uh, like NFS data store for ESS1 the same process we can repeat the same steps for the ESS2 also add stories and select the NFS next and your NFS or IP address are the name so 192.168.5.1 and the SAN2 or SAN1 so the data store name SAN1 so go for next and finish the same process SAN2 So sign two and go for next and finish. So now we have the complete data stores. I go for the home. So data stores and data source clusters. ESS1 data store, ESS2 data store. So for the both ESS1 and ESS2, SAN1 and SAN2 both are connected as a remote storage. So now we can install any VM in the remote storage devices only. So it's not recommended to install any virtual machine in the local storage. Because in future you want to provide like a high availability 
or you want to provide like a V motion or SV motion or FT, you want to configure all these options. Every host machine should have the two remote storage devices and the virtual machine must be installed in the remote storage devices only.